Hello, this is Paranormal Girl. I hope everyone's keeping safe and well in this terrible time that we're all going through right now. Mankind has long believed that it's possible to communicate with the dead. Attempts to do so have been made over the centuries through the oracles, seances, mediums and psychics. Today, with a variety of electronic equipment at our disposal, there might be an easier, more effective way to converse with the spirit world, whether or not the results are actual communication with the dead, or is it something else? The results seem to be very real indeed. One of the methods that's used to communicate with the dead is something called EVP electronic voice phenomena. It's a mysterious event in which human sounding voices from an unknown source can be heard on recorded data from an audio tape, radio station noise and other electronic media. EVPs have been captured on audio tapes more than any other media, but the mysterious voices aren't present at the time of the recording. It's only when the tape is played back, sometimes with the application of amplification and noise filtering, that the voices can be heard. One fascinating aspect of EVP is that the voices sometimes respond directly to what the people are asking during the time of their making of the recording. For example, researchers ask a question to which the voice will answer or comment. Again, this response is not heard until later when the tape is played back. EVP recordings vary by gender, men and women, age of course, and adults and children, tone, emotion and even language. Some are more easily heard and understood than others. Most EVPs consist of single words, phrases or short sentences, although sometimes they are made up of grunts, groans, growlings or other vocal expressions. The quality of EVPs also vary. Some are difficult to distinguish, with meanings that are open to interpretation. Some EVP, however, are quite clear and easy to understand. EVPs often has, have an electronic or mechanical character to it, although sometimes it can also be very natural sounding as well. So there's three types of categories of EVP qualities, and they are class A, class B, and class C. A class A EVP is easily understood by almost anyone with little or no dispute. These are also usually the loudest of the EVPs. A class B EVP usually is characterized by warping of the voice in certain syllables. It's lower in volume or more distant sounding than class A. A class B EVP is the most common type of EVP. And finally, there's a class C EVP, which is characterized by excessive warping. They are the lowest in volume, often more like a whispering sound, and are the hardest to understand. Usually when you get a class C EVP, you do have to put the volume up as best you can and you do have to listen very carefully. So, where do the voices on EVP actually come from? That, of course, is the mystery. No one actually knows. Some popular theories are that they are really voices of the dead. This is why many researchers go to cemeteries seeking EVPs, often with great success. In this context, the phenomenon is also called instrumental transcommunication, or ITC for short. Are they from another dimension? Well, it's theorised that there may be many dimensions of existence, 
and somehow beings from some other dimension are able to speak and communicate with ours via ECP. A pertinent question, however, is how do they know English and other languages of our dimension? That is something we can't answer, but they seem to understand and know exactly what they need to tell us at the time that we do our communications with them. Do they come from other researchers' own subconscious? Well, it's been suggested that somehow the researchers' thoughts are projected onto the tape. But then again, how is that possible? Because if that is the case, then wouldn't we hear our own voices on the tape recordings? And nine times out of ten, the voices that we do hear when we get the playback is never our own, is it? It's always another male or another female. And they don't exactly speak like us either, do they? If you've ever tried it yourself. The voices are angelic or demonic in origin. Now, that could be another example of what might be happening. For example, you might ask, can you hear me? And you might get a very demonic no coming through that's more like a growl. Uh, that has happened to me on a, a few occasions and it's quite unnerving to say the least. Also, you might hear other voices that you cannot recognise. What you do have to do is ask specific questions. Let them give you the answer and then on playback, you can then determine what that answer is. Usually, more chances are that they do come back quite clearly. Or is it a hoax? A lot of sceptics think that there's nothing to EVPs at all and that the voices are either faked, random noise interpreted as voices, real voices that are already on the tape, or voices picked up from the radio, cell phone or other sources. I beg to differ about that one. I've actually done uh, communications using EVP myself. And no, it's not a cell phone or other sources. So what are the origins of EVP? Well, Thomas Edison, while it may not be common knowledge, back in the 1920s, tried to invent a device capable of communicating with the dead. At the time, Edison wrote, if our personality survives, then it's strictly logical or scientific to assume that it retains memory, its intellect or other faculties and knowledge that we acquire on this earth. Therefore, if we can evolve an instrument so delicate as to be affected by our own personality as it survives in the next life, such an instrument, when made available, ought to record something, don't you think? Edison never succeeded with the invention, obviously, but it seems he did believe that it might be possible to capture disembodied voices with a recording voice. Reverend Drayton Thomas. In the early 1940s, while investigating the abilities of Gladys Osborne Leonard, a well-known medium of a day, Reverend Drayton Thomas claimed to have captured disembodied voices on tape. He later identified one of the voices as his own father. Attila von Zale and Raymond Bayliss. According to various accounts, American photographer Attila von Zale began his attempt to capture spirit voices using a 78 RPM Pack Bell record. Cutter and player, either in the late 1930s or the early 40s. Well, Zale's early attempt efforts were not very successful. He continued his experiments, teaming up with psychologist Raymond Bayliss in the early 50s, using a device that Bayliss had devised and constructed with much better results. Marcello Bacchi. Near close to the 1940s, Marcello Bacchi, or Bacchi, of Grosseto, Italy, claimed to be able to pick up voices of the deceased on something that he used called a vacuum tube radio. We're not sure of the results really, but 
it might be worth having a look on Google to see if he did come up with any results at all. Father Annetti and Father Gemelli. In 1952, two Catholic priests, Father Annetti and Father Gemelli, inadvertently picked up EVPs while recording Georgian chants on a reel-to-reel tape recorder called the Magnetophone. When the wire on the machine kept breaking, Father Gemelli looked to the heavens and asked his dead father for help. To the shock of both men, his father's voice was later heard on the recording saying, Of course I shall help you. I'm always with you. Further experiments confirmed this phenomenon. Frederick Jürgensen. In 1959, Swedish film producer Frederick Jürgensen was recording bird songs. On the playback, he could discern his mother's voice saying in German, Friedrich, you are being watched. Friedel, my little Friedel, can you hear me? His subsequent recording of hundreds of such voices would earn him the title, The Father of EVP. He wrote two books on the subject, Voices from the Universe and Radio Contact with the Dead. Dr. Konstantin Raudiv. Jürgensen's work came to the attention of the Lativan psychologist named Dr. Konstantin Raudiv in the 1960s. At first, he was sceptical. Raudiv began his own experiments in 1967. He too also recorded the voice of his deceased mother, saying, Kostulit, this is your mother. Kostulit was the boyhood name she always used to call him. He recorded after that thousands of EVP voices. And finally, George and Jeanette Meek. Spiritual researchers George and Jeanette Meek joined forces with psychic William O'Neill and recorded hundreds of hours of EVP recordings using radio oscillators in the 70s and 80s. They were allegedly able to capture conversations with the spirit of Dr. George Jeffries Mueller, a university professor and NASA scientist who also passed away in 1967. So what are the steps that you can use to actually record the voices yourself? Well, let me read you a few that you could use. You could buy very basic equipment. To do this, you can get the best voice recorder you can afford. Mostly you can buy those very small digital recorders um, that you could buy from one of the stores. They're not very expensive. Or you could go for something like a, a Tascam recorder, which is a more professional piece of equipment that um, interviewers use. That is one of the higher end recorders that you could use. I have one of those myself and you do get very, very good results from that. It's called a Tascam recorder. Most researchers prefer digital recorders over cassette recorders because cassette recorders with the moving parts create their own noise. So you might have the spools of the wheel creating some kind of noise on the recording itself. Not always the case, because what you might find with a, a tape is that certain sounds can be picked up on a tape that maybe a digital recorder might not be able to pick up. You also might be able to um, purchase a good set of earphones or headphones to listen to your recording playback. A lot of researchers also recommend external microphones to connect to your recorder as they might be more sensitive and produce better quality recordings. But don't worry about that. I would go for the, the Tascam recorder and just a normal set of headphones. So you set up your recorder. Many digital recorders have a selection of quality. Always choose the high quality or extra high quality setting. And that you must see the recorder's manual. And obviously make sure you've got a nice fresh set of batteries. Choose your 
location. This is always important. Now, you could either go to um, a cemetery. You might be able to find somewhere nice and quiet where there's not too many people around. And start asking questions. Um, if it's something that you're interested in, you could ask them, is there anyone with me? Uh, things like, what is your name? When did you pass away? How old are you? And questions like that. Where did you used to live? Are there any relatives that I could speak to? Although this might be a little fun, you could even try it in your own home. But consider how you'll feel if you succeed and get an EVPs in your own home. That might actually frighten you a little bit. Will it bother you? Mm, it could very well. So... It's an idea that you could use, you could practice at home, but just be careful what you wish for. You might get something that you wish you never heard. Keep it quiet. You're trying to pick up voices that can often be very, very softly spoken, subtle and hard to hear. So keep the environment as quiet as possible. That is the very utmost importance. Turn off your radios, your TVs, your computers, any other source of sound, even if you've got a clock ticking in the room, take it out. Avoid moving around in the atmosphere because that again will pick up on the recording sounds of footprints, uh, sorry, footsteps and rustling of clothes. Just have a seat, take a deep breath before you make your recording and then quietly go into the session. You turn on the recorder, put it on record and then begin to start saying out loud who you are, where you are, and what time it is. Do not whisper. Talk in a normal tone of voice. What you then need to do is ask questions. Again, in a normal tone of voice, leave adequate space between your questions to allow the recorder to pick up any possible responses. Like, for instance, researchers may ask, are there any spirits here? Can you tell me your name? Can you tell me something about yourself? Why are you here? Now, surprisingly, EVP voices sometimes respond to direct questions. You mostly get very good answers with those questions alone. Have a conversation. If someone is with you during your recording session, you can talk with one another. Don't just be too talkative, though. You want to give the EVP voices a chance. A conversation is okay, but many researchers have found that EVP voices actually comment on what you're saying. Next, you must be aware of ambient noise. As you're making your recording, try to be very aware of noises both inside and outside of your environment. In everyday life, we have trained our brains to filter out a lot of the background noise. But your recorder will pick up absolutely everything so when you're making your recording be aware of those noises and remark about them if you hear something say you hear a door go oh sorry that was a door oh that was a dog barking outside that was a car passing on the street oh that was my neighbor yelling always if you hear these sounds make sure you say on the recording what it is so you're not getting results that you think might be on the EVP that is actual normal everyday sounds. Give it some time. You don't need to spend hours recording but give your sessions a good 10 to 20 minutes each. You don't have to be asking questions and talking the whole time. Absolute quiet is okay too. Also if you do hear other noises, make sure you mention that on the recording itself. Once you've done that, you stop your recording, then you play it back. Listen to the recording. Listen to the recording on the recorder's little speaker. That's usually adequate, but you can also plug in earphones and listen carefully to the recording might also be useful to put in external speakers. But sometimes earphones are better because it blocks out external noise again. 
So, did you pick up any answers? If so, write them down. Make a note of everything that you hear. Once you've done that, download the recording. A better method of listening to and analysing your recording is to download it to your computer. Many digital recorders come with software for doing this. So again, you can download your recording onto your computer and it makes it easier to turn up the volume, pause, go back and listen to specific segments of your recording. Again, it's best to listen through your computer via your headphones. Keep a log. When you download the recording to your computer, give the audio file a name that reflects the place, the date and the time, such as Asylum 1, 2311 at 10 p.m. And it was a .wav file. Create a written log of your recordings and any results you may have heard. Like I said before, make a note of what you thought you heard so you can easily find the recording again when you need to. If you do hear a possible EVP on your recording, be sure to note the time on the recording and put that in the log. For example, if you hear a voice saying, I'm cold at 0512 on the recording, put that in your log for that recording at 0512, I'm cold. This makes it easier to find that, AV, to find that EVP at a later time. Often, you must also let others listen. EVP vary greatly in quality. Some are very clear, while others are very hard to hear or understand. For low quality EVP especially, understanding or interpreting what the EVP is saying is a very subjective thing indeed. So have others listen to the EVP and tell them what you think it's saying. Don't tell them what you think it's saying before you have them listen to it. Otherwise, it influences their opinion. Let them listen to it. See what they come up with as the result. And then you compare your results together. That might be a good idea to write that on your log as well. Be honest. Be honest with all aspects of paranormal research. Honesty is a very prime importance. Do not fake EVPs to impress or scare friends because that is actually defeating the purpose. Be honest about what you're hearing. Try to be objective as possible. Eliminate the possibilities that the sound was just the dog barking or a neighbour yelling. You want good quality data. If you don't, keep trying. You may not get EVPs the first time round or the first five times you try. The strange thing is some people are luckier than others. I know when I first started, I was getting EVPs straight away. And I still continue to do so now. And I started at a very early age of about 14. And I used to use an old radio. It was called a radiogram. And I would find the white noise channel in between the two channels. And I'd start asking it questions. And a lot of the time I could be sat there for a good hour or two before I got results. Other times I used to get lots of chatter and lots of direct answers to what I was asking. I used to get names, places, how old they were, where are they, you know, how old were they when they passed, Uh, do they know that they've passed, and I would have amazing conversations, sometimes with great results, sometimes not with good results. So it's always worth practice, practice, practice. You've got to keep trying. Also, the researchers have noted that the more you experiment with EVPs, the more results you will get. Persistent. Persistence often pays off. And here's some good tips as well. Work at night. One reason ghost researchers often seek EVPs at night is not only for the spooky ambience, it's also a quieter time of day. Leave the room option. What you could do is set the recorder down Walk away from the room for about 15 to 20 minutes, up to an hour. Come back after the hour, stop the recording and then play it back. That might be also a very good idea. Editing software. There might be lots of recording that there is no sound. 
So you might need to edit and cut that. It's entirely up to you or you leave it in its raw state. Um, there's some very good audio editing software such as uh, it's called Audacity and it's free online. And that's quite good to analyze EVPs. The software lets you boost low volumes, eliminate some background noise and does other little tasks as well. Share your EVP. If you've captured what you consider good quality EVP, consider sharing them. You can go online and share it with your group. If you have a paranormal group or you have something like Discord, you can put it on the Discord server that you have yourself. Or you might want to share it on YouTube, for instance. It's always worth sharing it with others. See what they think. See what their feedback is as well. It's always good to have other feedback from other people. So what's your view on EVPs and ghost voices, recordings? Have you ever tried one yourself? If not, I suggest you have a go. But what you must remember before you do any such session, treat it like a seance or a Ouija board session. You always introduce yourself, state your purpose, and then you ask your questions. And always, always, always at the end of your session, you close it down. You thank those who were speaking to you and say, you can always say, thank you. You can go back to where you came from and then you can close the session down. And that's always worth bearing in mind when you do these kind of things, because what you might find is if you leave the session open, you might find that you might have other spiritual phenomenon uh, carrying on for when you go home. It might follow you. So always, always, always remember to close that session down and thank them. So if you've ever done EVP recordings, please leave a comment below. I'd be very interested in what you had to say. Thank you for listening.